To test this MOSFET transistor, we will be analyzing it in the following way. We can observe in the circuit where the negative input is. And we can see the output to the transformer, which are usually the thickest tracks when we have identified it. We need to put our multimeter in resistance mode and test between this input and this output. The resistance must be high. As we can see here, it must show us megaohms, very high kiloohms, or megaohms also as in this case. Look, it looks a bit bad because of the light. Now yes. Megaohms must be showing us. It has to go up and down, it has to be varying. In this case we have it in good condition, not only because of the component itself, but also because of all the components that are surrounded. This is the approximate value of a power supply in good condition. If it shows us OL in this case, something would be defective. Or if it shows us 00, zero direct continuity, surely something is wrong and the power supply will not work. This is because the transformer, if this switch is stuck, will receive direct current and will not work directly. This is an approximate value that a MOSFET transistor must indicate to us. If we had a switch outside the board and wanted to test its operation, we would have to do the following. We will grab the component and we need to know its characteristics. Look, in this case, Let's see if we can see it. Here we have one LN364PN. Here we can see one, but we are going to see a different model. This one I like more. It looks much better. TNY264PN. That's the number that's going to matter to us. Gradually, you will get used to it and you will know which code identifies them. The one at the top is simply a factory code. The one at the bottom is also a serial code but the patent that indicates how this component is made up inside is TNY264PN. That is what you will be looking for on the internet. An electronics technician has to have access to the internet all the time today because many things that we are going to be analyzing we have to look for information on the internet. We will put TNY264PN in the Google search. This way we will have data about our component. We can go directly to images and we will have a drawing of how it is formed. Well, in the connections that have the letter S this is source, there is where the negative will enter, where the electrons will enter. And at the gate D, that is the drain or output to the transformer. We grab our component. Look that we have a mark or guide that is always in electronic components of this format. Next to that point is the number one. That is the bypass and we will talk about it in a moment. The two and three are the same. They are the source. The four is the enable. Eight and seven are different data. One, two, three, four, the five is the drain. Six is not there. Seven and eight. Look that the 6 is not there. Well, what we have to test are 2 and 3 together with 5. So, let's do that test now to see how our component is. There we can see the number. Here we have 2 and 3, and there we have 5. Look that 2 and 3 are in direct continuity. We had just seen that 2 and 3 were exactly the same. And between 2 and 3 and 5, 10 megaohms, 11 megaohms. This component is in good condition. 13 megaohms, we are very well. As we could see, this is the way to test this component that is damaged quite a bit. If it is damaged, the best thing to do is to test all the components that surround it in the power supply, test them, and if everything is correct, replace it. If you cannot find the exact replacement, an adaptation can be made as we did on this board, but it is quite complex. You have to look at many more parameters, you have to cut tracks and make connections. 
That may be left for later, when you are more trained in electronics. But many times, or most of the time, we can replace it directly. In the case of this board, the original component was a Q100, a component I had never seen before. When it was damaged, we could not find a replacement anywhere. So we adapted a Viper 22A, which is universal and can be adapted with a little work. So we were able to make it work. But some time later, in one of the classes, we discussed what had happened to me and a student sent us the link where it was already on sale on AliExpress. Today, even the same one that we had not found can be obtained for replacement. These are details to consider with regard to switch mode power supplies. Of course, once this switch fails, you need to test the components around it. You need to take the time to test the diodes, which will be part of that return of electrons to create the alternating current. We need to test the resistors, which we still need to analyze so that you understand how they are measured. We need to test these optocouplers that we still need to analyze and the capacitors that are surrounding the switch. These capacitors surround the switch and are part of the enable to activate or excite the transformer coil. Once we have tested them, we can come up with a solution to the problem if it is failing. In the next video, we will see the circuit of a switch.